This painting reminds me of the end of summer when the sun has bleached all of the colour out of the leaves and you're starting to get those cooler foggy mornings that let you know that fall's on the way. I know this painting looks quite complicated but when we break it down you can see that it's actually built up of simpler techniques that you would use on any painting. So before I did anything on this painting, I taped off around the edge like normal. But I went ahead and marked the lines of the painting. So where I want the sky to end, where I want the fence line and the distant tree line to start and end. And I just marked these with a little pencil mark on the tape on either side. It gives me an idea of where I've got to bring the previous layers down to. I also added a small sticker. You can't really see it, but it's a small round sticker that I cut out of the same tape that I use around the edge. And I put this where the sun is going to be. You don't have to do this. You can go ahead and take a small paintbrush, a little bit of golden yellow, and draw a circle for your sun location. This will help you with your shadow direction for the fence, and you'll know where not to paint when we come to do the, the tree that leans over the sun. So the sky for this one, we want to take up about half of the page. We're going to do a warm yellow gradient up to a, a pale blue. But we're going to want to make sure that we don't get green where these two colours meet. You can do this by creating a much paler stripe between the two. By having lots of white in this neutral zone between the two colours, it reduces the risk of blue mixing with yellow and instead you get the blue mixing with the white and then the yellow mixing with the white to create a, a smooth transition between the two. So once your sky is dry we can go ahead and add the distant tree line. This is made up of burnt umber and white. We want to add the white so that we get the contrast when we add the foreground layers because we want the burnt umber that we use in the, the final layers to stand out against the background because they're gonna be they're gonna be much more saturated and much closer to us. For this, I'm just using my good old angled flat brush to make the tree line. It's gonna be the darkest along the top edge, and we're gonna as we pull it down, we're going to add more white and that's going to make the, the fog sitting in the valley. Learning to paint gradients or blending colours in gouache is definitely something that's worth spending a little time on. It's a skill that comes up in nearly every painting and it's one that takes a little bit of getting used to because of how quick gouache can dry on the page. If you want some more tips on blending with gouache, if you sign up for the gouache mob on my website, moderngouache.com, you can get access to a bunch of free resources that help you with learning the gouache basics. So once we've done the gradient for the distant tree line, we're just going to add another sneaky little line in which is going to be like maybe a field just behind our fence line. This is not going to start off as dark as your distant tree line but we're going to do the same kind of dark along the top edge and blending it out to something a little lighter. Now we can start to add the fence in. 
We're going to use a small round brush for this. And when you've added all your fence posts, you can start to work along and create the interesting shapes of the grasses and the plants that are growing along the fence line. Make sure that you don't obscure that little, that little line above it that we've done of the next brow. You can bring the dark down to the edge of the road. We're going to do a little bit with this, we're going to add some lights in, but for now you can just block out the area with your, your burnt umber mix. So what we've got here is we've got the whole dark area blocked out with the silhouettes along the top edge of the plants, um, but we're going to need to lighten it up in areas so that we can paint the shadows across the grass. We're not going to paint the shadows yet because we need the road to be painted in. But we're going to add some lighter areas in the grass. These are scruffy shapes. Don't worry about them being anything special or particular. You're just going to need a scruffy light area that we can pass a darker shadow over. For the road itself, we can use um, a burnt umber mixed with yellow ochre for that kind of warm punch. We'll add the warmest area closest to the fence in the centre and we'll darken it up as we get towards the edges of the painting. This doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth blend, it's a road so we're going to have textures and unevenness and we're going to add, we're going to add some texture in a minute to this as well so, but just a fairly, a fairly even uh, blend from warm and lighter in the centre to warm and darker around the edge. So once the road is all dry, we can come back in with our darkest burnt umber and we can start to punch up the shadows. So the, the larger posts are going to be darker, the grasses under the fence line, kind of the backs of the grasses, they're going to be darker and also where the the grass meets the road, that little line where the grass ends is going to be darker too. Use a small round brush and your burnt umber to add the shadows of your posts. And pay attention to the direction of these from either your sticker marking the location of your sun or from a point that you've decided where you'll place the sun. Along with the shadows of the fence posts, the grasses that are taller along the fence would cast shadows too, and the grasses that are along the edge of the road would also cast some shadows, and you can go ahead and put those in too. Tweaking with this fence line and the grass and the road is what's going to take the most time with this painting. So don't rush this step. I like to add in what I think the painting needs and then just stand back and take a look and see what else needs to be added, where shadows need to be deepened and where I think there needs to be more contrast. You can take the very tip of your brush and add a few pebbles to the road with a little bit of burnt umber 
and kind of build up some of the darker textures around the edge where the shadows are greater. I use the side of the brush and almost a dry brushing technique to kind of lightly scrub just a little bit of paint for these. For the two smaller trees that sit along the fence line, you can use a small round or a liner brush for this. You'll want your gouache mixed quite thin so that it comes off the brush easily. And you can use a stroke that's lighter towards the end to create the effect of the branches getting smaller towards the outside of the tree. I like to build up a general framework of the tree where I want my major branches to be before I start to fill out with small marks for the leaves. So for the larger foreground tree that leans in from the right hand side, you want your branches to be slightly larger. You also want to make your branches pass over where your sun will be. The biggest part of this painting is the glow of the sun through the trees. So we want to make sure that we've got a tree to, to glow through. I found it easiest to mark out with my branches uh, the basic structure of the tree before I went in and added the leaves. For leaves like this where you can kind of make out the shape of them, I used the just the tip of the brush just to make simple drooping leaf shapes. And this you kind of evaluate as you go on whether or not you've got enough leaves in a certain area. If it's making an interesting shape, if you're allowing enough of the background to show through, or if you want the tree to look a little denser. And you can see why we added a lot of white to the distant tree line. So we get that nice contrast between the, the darker, more saturated foreground details. Once you've added your final details to the tree, you're ready to go ahead and take off your sticker for your sun or to just go ahead and start with your, your colouring of your sun. To break down the, the sun's glow, it's kind of added in in two stages. One is how it makes the leaves on the trees glow. So you're going to add your, your brighter yellow to these areas. And the other is the glow in the sky that you're going to see. And this is a much softer yellow, but also um, quite warm to give it contrast against the pale yellow of the, of the sky here. The most notable thing about the sun burning through the trees is the, the golden yellow glow that it puts on the closest leaves. For this I used a, a pale yellow and I added a bit of white to it. Yellow is quite a transparent colour naturally and I really want it to give that that solid glow feel. A little white added will do this. Once you've done your glow around the sun and on the leaves, you might find that some of that yellow has crept into your, your brightest area of your sun a little and we kind of want to punch that back up to as white as we can to make it appear bright against its surroundings. And we'll do that with just titanium white painted into your, your sun. And that's it. You get to peel off your tape and your painting is done. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.